Few people have ever heard of the racial segregation that took place in South Auckland against Maori during the segregation era. And of those people who are familiar with it, no one knows the full story. And that's what I want people to know, the full story. Between the mid-1920s and the early 1960s, barbers in Pukekohe refused to cut Maori hair. There was one barber who did, who had a special Maori-only chair so people wouldn't catch a disease because his European customers were complaining. At the Strand Theater, they weren't allowed upstairs. And downstairs, they were segregated because of complaints about that they smelled or bad behavior. And then during that period, there was one bar in town that would serve Maori alcohol. And at one point, Maori women had to get served outside behind the bar in a field. The taxi drivers wouldn't pick up Maori. The bus from Pukekohe to Auckland and back, if a bus got full and a European got on, the Maori had to stand, and if you didn't stand, you got yelled at. The school in Pukekohe in the late 1940s, against the convention of the education department, had separate toilets for Maori, and they had monitors in the hallway watching, and if you went into the wrong toilet, you got hit with a strap. And the swimming baths at that school, Monday through Thursday, the European and Asians were allowed to go in, and then on Friday they let Maori in, then they changed the dirty water. And one of the things that really stood out to me was this report. In December of 1937, four different government agencies sent representatives, officials, into Pukekohe to see what was going on because they'd heard these stories. And they reported back, and they were on the ground there, this isn't hearsay, this is firsthand. They reported back that not a single person in town would rent to Maori, forcing them to live on the market gardens in a slum area. And they also reported the school in Pukekohe, not a single Maori was going to school at that time. And then the businesses, not a single business in town would allow Maori to use their toilets or public amenities like the telephone. And as a result of that, in the segregation, Maori were forced to live on the market gardens, away from the European community. And this really touched a nerve with me, because I grew up on a farm in upstate New York, and I know how important the land is to people, and that connection to the land. And in the late 1800s, they lost their land unjustly, it was taken away. And they were essentially indentured servants, almost slaves, on their ancestral land, living in slums, away from the European community. And what was the major finding of this book was that as a direct result of the racial segregation, hundreds and hundreds of Maori, infants and children, died who shouldn't have died. And I feel I'm a voice for these voiceless people.